Podcasting from somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, the birthplace of Bruce Lee, the iPhone, and the Bendy Straw. This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. No was a dream, a million miles away, there was fire in the- Amazon.com. You know, I won't be surprised if more and more stuff that I shop for, buy, and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon. It's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to ruelsrunning.com, click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to RuelsRunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. Hey, Lonnie, it's Ruel. How are you? I'm doing great, man. What's going on? (laughs) I'm recording. Is this the right number to call you at? Sure, this works. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, this should be fun. I haven't done this in a while. No, it's been, man, has it been a year, six months? I think so. You want, you, want, uh, you are the, the first um, caller guest for the podcast for 2016. <laughs> Am I really? Well, I know who your next two are. Yeah, let's see how that pans out if rescheduling doesn't, uh, doesn't throw things off. Well, I was, I was just talking to Anna, and she told me I'm at one, she's at three, and Vinny's at four, or something like that. Yeah, so Anna, Anna's sort of, uh, she's sort of, uh, I say tentative, because uh, I know she's, um, did you just talk to her recently? Yeah, just literally, uh, I got some breaking news from her five, ten minutes ago, and okay. and um, I told her I'll, 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 I'll share the news with with the group once uh once I get off the podcast with you so awesome <laughs> and I guess I can I can I can uh, I can share with you and your audience now because by the time this comes out it'll be public knowledge but she has her ebook now ready that that we've all been waiting for so um, she asked me to make a make a post in the group to to let everybody know that her ebook is available on Kindle through Amazon so. Nice. That's and awesome. the title of her book is "Eat Happy" by Anna Vocino. Nice. So I'm, I'm sure she'll tell you all about it. So you're getting breaking news before anybody else. <laughs> well, I appreciate you breaking the news here. Um, yeah, that's cool. I um, yeah, I have her lined up for three, um, our time. I mean, Pacific We're, time, right? And then after her, I have I have Vinny lined up. Right, right. So it's uh, going to be a pretty hectic schedule. I tried to get Mark Thompson on, but, you know, it was just too last minute. He's in the middle of the office and he can't record. So, you know, I recorded a, sort of a regular show <laughs> where uh, I was Skype chatting with him and then I was, I was you know, running the regular sort of uh, episode and mixing in, oh, here's Mark Thompson, and then we were... Asking, I'm asking questions for the audience to hear, and then reading out reading out his responses. So I was kind of getting kind of all over the place. Cool. Yeah, Mark's a neat guy. Yeah. <coughs> um. Yeah. Cool. So, how are things, man? Man, I, today I'm on top of the world. A lot of stress has been relieved off my shoulders from a nightmarish job of mine that just was would not go away but now uh now everything's perfect nice you've seen pictures pictures of my mold job that i'm working on where i'm pulling out the subfloors and all that yeah yeah well, that, that's turned into a big lead abatement asbestos abatement uh-huh mold remediation and um yeah, now we're doing some other work. <laughs> it's a nightmare, but she knows she's on page. She's on the same page as I am, so all is good. Wow. And I'm rained out, so I can't do a I can't do anything there, so I'm good to go. So you're so you're podcasting with me. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so what are we talking about today? Do you have an agenda? You just asked me if I had time today, and I said, sure, but I don't know what you want to talk about. No, you know, I, I don't have an agenda, so, you know, um, hopefully uh, we can make a good show out of it. I know in the past we've talked about, um, you know, type 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 2 diabetes and blood sugar related stuff so we don't have to go through that conversation um but i just wanted to catch up it's been over six months you know i haven't ha- i haven't haven't had you on the phone so we can just talk whatever we want cool well i got some time it's raining really really hard here so i'm i'm rained out so well you know, i got some news i haven't shared with you yet I don't even know if I've told Trey. I think I have. Um, but my my baby girl, she's 10 years old, and uh, she had like a low blood sugar episode oh, about a month ago. Oh, and no. She can't get in to see the doctor until, oh, a couple, couple more weeks. But I did a home A1C test on her, and all the junk that she eats – is finally catching up with her. Her A1Cs are 5.4, and she's only 10 years old. So yeah, we'll, we're we're going to be going down that that rabbit hole here pretty soon. She, um, she's wanting to wait, start eating right until after the doctor's appointment. I'm like, oh, you might as well just start now, hon. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's tough with kids though, trying to get them to eat right whenever all they've ever had, you know, for 10 years. 10 yeah. or 12 years now is nothing, but my oldest actually eats pretty good. She'll eat almost anything I make. She loves onions. She loves bacon. She loves broccoli and eggs, stuff like that. But oh um, my baby girl, if it's not chicken nuts, pop tarts, potato chips, and I feel, feel horrible every time I see her eat that stuff. And I know people say, Oh, just don't have the stuff in your house. And they'll eventually eat. Yeah, we've tried it. She, it's actually gone three days without eating. It's like, no, you need to eat. So it's like, whatever. I guess put something in her belly, even if it's not what it needs to be. Yeah. Can you? So when you say she started having low blood sugar, what is it? Um, symptoms? Yeah, she was. Av- you know, she got real nauseous, uh, real dizzy, started sweating profusely, and um, yeah, and, and and we checked her blood sugar and and. It actually wasn't that low. It was only like seventy two, but she was she was having a hypoglycemic episode and, and her body was saying it was too low and it was wanting to shut down and she was at a camp and and uh one minute she said she was fine and had no it wasn't even that that hot. Next thing you know, she just laying on the ground just because she too weak, felt like she was gonna puke. And just sweating, she said it soaked shirt and everything. Wow. So, Man. That's yeah. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, it's horrible crazy. And I've been I've been riding the uh, I've been riding the uh you know, the, the train of hey, you know, my daughters have, have the family history of diabetes. We need to start pretending and eating like, you know, like like they should and now my wife is still of the impression that kids need carbs and they need sugar, and she won't she won't believe that. Believe me, whenever I say no, nobody needs carbs and sugars. But yeah, I, August second or fourth or something like that, we have our doctor's appointment. Ah, oh, gee, okay. <clears throat> but wow. he's on board. He's on, he's on board with. Um, yeah, I mean, I I paid him three hundred bucks to have him literally tell me I need to eat more fat and and I'm like no kidding <laughs> I know that <laughs> that's yeah. what I'm paying you for I'm <laughs> paying you for knowledge I already know the next time you need somebody to tell you something you already know pay me that $300 and I'll tell you it twice <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a fair deal well you know I'm you know your daughter's lucky to have uh have you kind of on top of things and help guide her through. Um, I can only imagine what it's like for other households who may have children who go through go through stuff like that and, you know, are lost and, you know, maybe not given the best advice on how to treat stuff and everyone tries to do the best they can, but man, I'm, you know, she'll be all right. 
you got her back. You're taking care of her. For... Yeah, she'll she'll come around. So she'll Trey, come around. Trey doesn't know. So what what what's Trey's reaction going to be like? I, I can't remember if I told him or not. I think I might have. I can't remember. He's had he's had some things kind of fall in his lap, expectedly, and um, yeah, and I and I I can't remember if I told him, but yeah, he's he's going to be like like I am. Well, you know what to do. You know how to feed her. Just do it. But you know, he's not a dad, so he don't know what it's like to starve your kid for three days, waiting trying to wait them out. And she's stubborn. She yeah. is incredibly yeah, I, stubborn. You know, knowing what, um, knowing what you know, knowing what I know, kind of the the similar things we know, having b- being part of sort of the uh, the low carb, high fat, NSNG, all that whole blood sugar controlling community, if you will, I guess. Right. Right. Um, it, you know, the struggle is real as a parent. You know, you know better, like you said, and you know, you, it's easier to it's easy to say just don't have stuff in the house like you said and then your kids will eat right but it's not as easy as it said is it oh it no it's not and and it actually is upsetting whenever i just see those posts in the in the vinnie torta riches no sugar no grains group well just just don't have it in the house and 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 they'll they'll eat i'm like well i didn't want to go past three days if she was stubborn i don't know if, if she was sneaking food from somewhere else i don't know i don't think she has any food hidden in her room yeah, but, you know, and your kids have to be somewhere if they're in school or or they're at camp or something. And if if what they if if they're not eating, then they can't be where they need to be, and then that takes a toll on how your day goes. So there's this weird right balance that you gotta and sacrifice that you gotta you gotta do. Um, like my kid today, um, he made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I mean. It's something new for him making those sandwiches, and like, the bread is not good. I know that, but you know, the best thing on that thing is the peanut butter, um, the jelly. We know that's je- questionable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's right. But it's like, uh, you know. Yeah, everybody has to live and learn. Yeah, I mean, it's not like he has the stuff every day, but you know, do the best as a parent to educate. You know, I'm I'm thankful that at least my kids they don't walk into a store and then kick and scream as we leave the store wanting this candy or that candy or this soft drink or whatever. So, yeah, yeah, my kids always beg for gum, and I hate gum with a passion. Not as much as Trey. Trey has like a whole psychological thing about gum, but I hate it for just as many reasons because uh, they they do nothing but fight, and then they steal each other's gum, and then want to put you know all five pieces in their mouth and they chew it up and in 20 minutes it's gone. And then they go steal the other ones and then it's a big fight. And I find it in my driveway and it's like, Oh no. Every time they ask me for gum, I was like, Nope, you got to wait till your grandmother buys it for you. Cause I'm not buying it. Oh man. You want to hear a story about yesterday with my kids? Sure. So we, we, we go out for dinner because we've spent most of the afternoon, um, you know, trying to get everybody together. You know, people leave leave camp and preschool and are done with work, and I we got to I got to round folks up. And by the time everybody's in the same vehicle, you know, we have to decide: are we close enough home to to figure out what to eat at home, or are we close enough to to a restaurant or something that we can pick something up to eat? So we went out. Sure, we all do that. Yeah, we went out to eat, and we went out to to a place where uh, next door is a. Uh, is a Menchie's. And I, Vinny's mentioned it on his on his podcast. Menchie's, that yogurt place. Oh, yeah. And, you know, we've gone there many times. A lot of times when we're eating, when we get food at a particular restaurant nearby, the kids want to default to, I want to go over there, I want to go over there. And we've gone there so many times post-meal that the kids have that expectation and that habit. And yesterday, I, didn't, I wasn't having it. I'm like, we're done with our, we're done with grabbing a bite to eat. We're just going to hop in the vehicle and go. But my middle kid was insistent, and he was not happy. He wanted to go to this yogurt place, you know, and he was pissed, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. We're getting, and we're getting pissed back. And then the youngest one doesn't like the, like the vibe in, in the vehicle, so she's starting to be upset, right? <laughs> 
Yeah. It's just All a, because you wouldn't give them yogurt. Yeah. You're a bad so daddy. I'm a bad I'm a, daddy. I'm a horrible dad. And then the the oldest kid, who's sitting between the two younger siblings, he's sitting there wondering why the iPad uh, ran out of power. <laughs> so he's like, yeah. oh, dude, isn't charging. And then we're like, be quiet. Don't you see? Yeah, yeah, your brother and sister are kind of upset right now. The last thing we need is all three of you kind of like whining and moaning and crying about stuff. Huh, so It's all about priorities. And so then I'm on the drive home, and you know the two youngest are not happy, and uh, so my my youngest son, the middle kid, he's you know we're just, he's kind of just that little kid cry where you I don't know your diaphragm mic control is off, and you're like you know you're sniffling and like sound like you're gagging at the same time, and yeah right and, and, right and hiccuping and all of that stuff. He 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 got that wound up about not getting his his yogurt. At that crappy place, right? Yeah, we have uh, a, a yo yums. Is, is this place one of those you you serve yourself and put all the toppings that you want on it, on there, and then they weigh it and you pay so much by the pound? Yeah, which is basically it's it's not quality yogurt, and then you get to top it off because you're special. You're you're treating yourself by by all these colorful toppings, and it's all just candy, crumbled. Right. You know, I looked at the whole menu, the whole the, all the topping selections. The the best thing, and it's not even the best thing, is is the uh, the sliced strawberries and the blueberries? Who knows how you know what quality those are? But those are the only things I see. Right, right. Well, there's the, there's the crushed peanuts, but then you know those are probably roasted with junky oil. <laughs> <laughs> stuff yeah. I don't stuff I don't tell my kids or my wife because it's, I'll just be ruining the party like I did this part like like I did yesterday. Nope, we're not going there. People kicking and screaming. But here's the thing, right? We're on the road. We're on the ride back home, and my kid's still trying to recover. He's dealing with him his, his all his spasmic, whatever hiccupy, cryy, crying diaphragmic issues. And then we, you know, and it's, it's but it's it's quiet other than all of his bodily noises. <laughs> and then we hear that we hear, we hear, we we. <laughs> <laughs> we hear. <"F-> <laughs> oh no! From one of your kids? <laughs> He's five years old, right? Oh man, he should not have said that. <laughs> he should not have said that at all because. Where? Yeah. Where did he learn that word at? Don't know. Do not know. You know. Oh, uh, that's at, funny. At five, he's just done kindergarten. He's going into the first grade. No, 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 no. He's actually kind of, he's, he's shifted. So he's actually going into kindergarten at, at, this five, at five, right? I remember I was in the first grade when I first attempted to drop the MF word, phrase. And I, and right, I, you know, right. So, you know, I get it. You know, you're a kid. You, you hear stuff and then you sort of experiment. You know, you tie in a phrase or a word with a certain set of emotions that you've witnessed others do. And, you know, he's experimenting. He's ex- exploring his language, and he just happened to say, um, "He used it correctly in the <laughs> in his in his emotion. He used the word correctly, but then at his age, in front of us, eh, that wasn't going to fly." And no, you know, but that's one of those words you can use in any context. It's a verb. It's a noun. It's an adjective. It's a uh, I don't you know I, I don't know what all it is, but it's everything. It, you can. You can use it in any term, and, and it's still appropriate, or not appropriate, but it's uh, in the right context. Yep, it's like coconut oil. You can use it on anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you can eat it. You can use it as lube. You know, use it. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I got a funny story for you. Yeah, yeah. So so we had a family re- reunion for my mother-in-law's family over the weekend down at a resort 60 miles south of us. Uh-huh. And... Uh, my 18 month old niece just loves me. I mean, like if we're, if I'm in the same room, I am, I am holding her, I'm walking her. She comes to me over, not over mom, but over her dad, over her grandfather, every, and even her grandmother and her aunts and cousins. I'm, I'm her uncle. So, uh, I was sitting there drinking black coffee, getting ready to leave and head home. And, uh, she she asked you know she she tried to take a drink I thought well she'll she won't like this dark black bitter coffee lo and behold that little girl child she loves black coffee nice and she kept saying more 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 so I was in her sip after sip and I found out that she uh, I guess she had enough uh, enough coffee that she did not take a nap <laughs> Monday afternoon like she was supposed to. 
But I thought, oh, well, I don't have to deal with her cry- being crabby and crying and stuff. <laughs> I sent her home to grandma's house all wired up on coffee for the first time ever. I was kind of proud of myself. Nicely done. You know, you. That's what uncles are for. You're nurturing another uh, coffee drinker into this world, and I applaud you for that. <laughs> yeah, last night I, I, I brought my own dinner over to my in laws. I ended up having to watch my nieces for a couple hours, three hours or something. So I brought over Anna's bacon broccoli thing that she has online, but I, I added onions and Brussels sprouts and spinach and onions and um, what else did I? Oh, and green beans. And that little girl chowed down on that. She was not having her apple. They got these little squeeze things now for, for babies. You just unscrew the cap off, and then they just kind of suck out applesauce or whatever's in it. Yep. She did not even want that that crap. She wanted my uh, green beans. I even gave her a little bit of spinach, and, and I mean, she just kept opening her mouth saying, ah, ah. <laughs> it was cute. It was funny. Yeah, I love it when... You know, kids get into the real food, and it makes you think. Well, it makes me think like their their body's been craving for this stuff, and they they haven't had it before, or they haven't had it for a while, and this is just their body telling them this is what I need right now. Going to town on. Yeah, yeah I texted her mom. Going going to town on Uncle Lonnie's green beans. Yeah, I, I texted her mom and I'm like, oh, by the way, your baby here uh, loves everything I just listed. And she like, really? How'd you get her to eat it? And I just said, yeah, by fork at a time <laughs> i never thought to try try giving her broccoli or 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 uh brussels sprouts I was like oh she loved them there you go of course it's ro- roasted up in villa capelli olive oil that's how i do mine and and and, and the baking grease from from the drippings while it's cooking oh yeah yeah i'll do that i'll i'll put olive oil and stuff and the kids wouldn't even expect it and then or even butter you know, some good butter, and, and uh, you know, I'm sure it helps. It's one of those other things that, you know, their body's probably craving. They haven't, they don't get that ordinarily in, in the standard uh, children's fare of space food. Right. Packaged in uh, squeezies with a little twisty top. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it is. It, it wasn't around whenever I had kids, so it's. It's new within, uh, my youngest is 10, so I don't know how long it's been around, but yeah, applesauce, back to all that, I, I cringe when people give their kids apple juice and, and applesauce and it's like, ugh, you're not doing them any favors, but I don't say nothing. It's not, you know, it's not my place. How long have you... But when they're at my house, I will try to feed them right. You know, you're just talking about giving your niece a, a little a little taste of your coffee my my daughter does the same thing with mine she'll uh like i have a starbucks cup with a little uh stopper on top of the lid little stick right, right. she'll pull that thing right out so it's got like it's got like a little dipping of coffee on it with a little heavy cream and then she sticks it in her mouth and she goes yum <laughs> she likes that uh, huh? yeah, she likes it which you know i don't have a problem with but you know people freak out like oh kids and coffee like there's nothing wrong with it Nothing wrong with it. Right. Well, my 12-year-old, every Saturday morning, she has a cup of coffee with me, and she likes it black as well, or with cream. Uh, or I, I'll even do up a bulletproof coffee. She loves that. I'll even throw in a raw egg or two, and she loves. It. She she just loves coffee. She says, Dad, I can't wait to get up and drink coffee with you every morning. And I say, oh, how, how do you do th- get up early How enough. do you do the one with the raw egg? How do you prepare that one? Uh, bulletproof style, um, but I just crack an egg or two in there and, and just blend it up. It doesn't turn out like um, egg drop soup. I mean, it just it it's just creamy, golden, delicious goodness. Wow! So the makes it real, really rich. You don't just you you don't omit anything from the egg, like the whites or the yolk. You just drop the whole thing in there. Just drop it in once I kick the blender on and get it all you know, twirling around in the canister, crack an egg in there. If a shell or two falls in there, oh, well, just put it up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, oh, it's great. I, I found the recipe on Mark Sisson's uh, yeah. Mark's Daily Apple, I think yeah. it is. I think he calls it a primal coffee. Yeah, yeah, I remember I remember the recipe, and I remember trying it one time. So you just do the coffee yep, and the egg? That's how I do it. Just the coffee and the egg, no? Uh, no, usually... 
I haven't done this in a while. I don't, and I don't do bulletproof coffee all that much. But no, I'll do the butter, the coconut oil, heavy cream, and an egg or two, and blend it all up. And I mean, shoot, I'm full the rest of the day. Yeah, I got. I got to give it a give it a try again. I have. Uh, I've done it once, but I. I. You know. The, you know that thing where you know it's good for you, but you, your your first try at it, you're not so impressed. But it may be one of those things. No, I was. I, I loved mine from the very first time oh. I. I saw it. I thought, oh, that's good. All right. I like it. I'll give it a shot again. But I don't. I don't usually take the time to do that. And yeah, I mean. Usually it's just black coffee, maybe some cream sometimes, but usually not. My wife has to have, she drinks coffee black with, with cream, and she has to have the cream, so I just make sure there's always enough cream for her. And eh, every now and then I'll do cream, but yeah, I, I like coffee no matter how you want to slice it. How when, when did you start drinking coffee? Oh, not until, uh, not until college. I mean, I grew up with a very my my dad drinks one to two pots of coffee every day so i've always tried it and never really liked it. whenever i was in college it had to have sugar and had to have you know all the junk in it and flavored creams and i mean i had to really just give it up and then once i just kind of cut out sugars and grains it just kind of like yeah i drank uh drank first black coffee not until i was so uh, Shoot, 35? I see. Up until then, it was just, you know, doctored up and camouflaged. And, yeah, just kind of the very first cup was kind of bitter. And, and then, uh, but something about it just kept me going back. And now, yeah, that's how I drink my coffee is black or cream. Ah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not opposed to putting cream in it. Back in my restaurant days, uh, we had chocolate pump and and uh, I would or, and fudge both and I would squirt chocolate or fudge directly in my coffee and blend it up and oh that was great oh my god pounds got packed on yeah your restaurant but it day tasted huh? awesome I didn't know I didn't know you yeah you didn't know I have a de- no I didn't know yeah I actually have a degree in hotel restaurant management no kidding check you out huh yep. I have a college degree that I am absolutely not using. <laughs> no, I can't say that. In, in the food handling side of things, uh, we learned about microorganisms and bacteria and you know food foodborne illnesses and a lot of the same. Um, you know, when I'm in a house that has sewage or something in the basement, I have to uh, believe it or not, I have to clean out the uh, the area under the under the wood framing that's up against the concrete, I have to clean that out and make sure that there's no E. coli and, and other listeria and other, other bacteria to make anybody sick. So I guess I, I love the microbiology of it and I, I use that part of it, but that's it. So do you ever, do, does any of your, your work take you to restaurant establishment sort of repair restoration and whatnot? Uh, I have a time or two. Um, I generally try to avoid commercial uh, settings just because it's usually they, they want it, they want up and running yesterday and then they don't somehow seem to come up with the money to pay you. Yeah. <laughs> they, they want everything under the sun done for free. And then they, then you tell them, Oh, you owe me this much money. And what? That's highway robbery. I'm not paying you that. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> and they- I don't, I don't want to fight you in court, brother. And they, they try to pay you in food. <laughs> yeah, I, I have done that. I did a pizza joint here in Berkeley, and then he gave me like $40 gift cards to his pizza joint. I'm like, great, thanks. And I just passed them out to my to my next customers as, as a thank you. Ah, neat. <laughs> like, eh, now, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use it. Now, how, what made you decide on getting a degree in a, what was it? What did you call it? Food and restaurant? Hotel restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, truthfully, whenever I was in high school, I only worked uh, evening and weekends, and and uh, you know Christmas breaks and summer breaks, and yeah, even during the school year, I was still pulling down like a thousand dollars a month living at home. Sixteen years old, I was you know busting tables and and um, 
but I was still pulling down a thousand a month. And I was thinking, man, if I had a college degree in this, I could have my boss's job and I'd be making 10,000 a month. I, I remember thinking that and little did I know at the time he was probably only making $2,500 a month, <laughs> but, uh, that's literally how I kind of got, got into, um, <laughs> that's how I got into the restaurant field. I, I, I liked it. it. I liked working nights and sleeping in until noon and having my afternoons free and going into work. And then we all hung out and partied and, you know, ran around after work. And, and, um, I was in my much younger, more wild days than I am now. So it, I don't know. I just like, I just like the food business. It's, it's, it's fun, but yeah, but I got out of that. Then I got into the investment planning, financial planning business for five years. That was interesting. Kind of hated it. So got out of that and got, got, uh, I actually a competitor lives four doors down from me and he half heartedly asked me every three or six months to come to work for him. And, um, finally one day I said, well, show me the money. And he took me into a fire that I, I had never seen a fire in the house before. And I said, you know how to do this? He said, yeah. And looking back on it, I could walk you through it and tell you how to do it over the phone. It, it was a do nothing fire, but I'd never seen it. And I thought it was like the most, catastrophic thing I've ever seen in my life and kind of got sold on it ever since and been doing the been doing that wow and that's the story of Lonnie yep pretty much and then for 15 years I've been doing this so doing the restoration business <laughs> so from the I got Anna Anna's actually texting me right now nice Okay. Well, okay. So she's she's wanting me to throw it out there on the group. Her uh, her link to her her ebook right now. Okay. So, or I do it after I after I'm done podcasting with Ruel. <laughs> it's like, no, do it now. And you know. Yeah. So did did you ever get to try the gen peroxide trick? I I I told you. Say that. Say it again. Did you ever get to try the hydrogen peroxide oh. trick that I that I told you? I heard. Did you ever try the cross eyed trick I showed you? I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> no, I I haven't. Am I? I haven't. Oh. No, no. But you know, it's funny. I was a, uh, um, I was Skype chatting with Bentley with Rick. Yeah. I wanted to see if I can pull him in to uh, on a call real quick. But he was like, I'm ten minutes. We're ten minutes away from podcasting. Um. Uh, we're gonna have Anna on. So I was like, "Oh, cool!" <laughs> so she must have just wrapped yeah, up. I knew she was coming up. She must yep. have just wrapped up with them. Yeah. So you're making the rounds, asking everybody to be on your show. Well, I'm trying to make the most of the day because I've decided to just take the day out of the office. I told my my boss and coworkers that I was gonna be gone. So yeah. So I'm just trying to make the best of it. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. But you know, like one caller already had to reschedule. It just wasn't working out, which is the thing wait hey um when when do you want to do your thing well you and i keep talking about it and then when i get a minute <laughs> yeah you you have life stuff going on and then 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 i then you get caught up and then i'm knee deep in <laughs> in muddy water or something I, I don't know i just need somebody to tell me how to flip it on and make it work i still need to go buy the sd card and actually probably read the book since i've never <laughs> even actually read the book yet it is sitting at, on my home office desk, though. But yeah. I still haven't had a chance or taken the time when I, I should have. I should have read that book by now and figured out how to make that thing work. Yeah, the, the folks are. But you know me, man. I'm just like I don't know. I'm not technology adverse, but I just want to flip a switch, make it work, and be done. I don't want to know all the in and outs and whys and hows and all that stuff. I just want to hit the power button and the. Re button and I just need to sit down and learn how to make that happen yeah yeah so what folks to know what we're talking about is uh, we Lonnie have Lonnie and I have talked offline many times about um, a podcast for him and uh, yeah that's what we're talking about hey you know what Lonnie there's um there are I've been hearing about services that basically do you know kind of what you're describing you know all it takes is for you to provide the the audio file and then Everything else is sort of part of a service. I don't know how it's structured, um, 
but that's something that I can try and point you to, or maybe it might be something that I might be able to help do with you or for you or something. And it's just stuff we can continue kind of going back and forth with. I like, I like, you know, I like doing this stuff. I like putting myself out and talking with folks. I have a lot of fun. I, I, if I could do this, you know, more and more, I think it keep me from falling in some sort of depression. <laughs> Ah, you do this for therapy then. I think I do, just like running. Isn't that crazy? But it's, it's a lot of fun. You know? I there's a, there from the No, podcasting or running's fun. Both. <laughs> yeah, I've never gotten the runner's bug. Trey even keeps telling me, Oh, just go do it and you'll you'll catch on and I'm like, nah. I got too many bad memories of running. It was always punishment for me. Yeah, it's you know, it doesn't have to be running, it could be any other physical activity, whatever floats a person's uh interest their boat um but it all comes down to like there's a level of stuff that you can't control and there's some things you can control and one of those things that i can control is my run to it you know so i think if i have if i have if i'm able to do it then i feel okay at least i have that much control and i'm not that bad off um then with with doing things online like the podcast or these recent series of uh, videos it's like you know, I'm having to sort of step out of a uh, comfort zone. I have to, like, just put myself out there and see, <laughs> and then see if I can have fun or not. And so far, it's been fun. If life doesn't get in the way. Yeah, I, I, like, the, I like the online world. I find it kind of fun. It's always interesting. <laughs> the the, the behind-the-scenes politics of that NSNG group can be fun sometimes, can't it? Yeah, and that's stuff we don't talk about that often. Like you and I, we 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 uh, we're in that. We've been in that group for quite a long time, and we're we've, we're both playing uh, roles that help moderate and administer that group currently. So yeah, right. Yeah, the uh, yeah. What is what is I I just called the Vinny group. Uh, the no sugar no grain. The Vinny Todd Richie no sugar no grains Facebook group. Yeah, right. I usually just refer to it as the group. It's. I'm involved with that group more than my own industry stuff. It's it's kind of funny, but my industry groups are kind of boring. Yeah, not always. <laughs> we have a we have a lot of crude humor, and you know a lot of stuff will fly in my industry stuff because it's 99% guys, and we don't care. I mean, you throw a a meme out there that's off color. Well, we don't you know <laughs> we don't care. We just scroll past if it's not our thing or. Or if it's very blatant, we we just handle it and tell each other, you know, you're being a dickhead. Pull it down. Yeah, that was uncalled for. Yeah, without that. Yeah, we don't have a lot of crybabies. Without that group, there's a whole lot that I wouldn't know. There's a, there was a, there's a whole lot I wouldn't have become, you know, and, and as far as um, getting healthy and stuff, and all of the friends and relationships that have come from it, like. We wouldn't have known each other, would we? And your brother, oh, no. Trey, no. you know, um, Rick Bentley, Mark Rogers from the Simply Human podcast. Um, yeah, a lot of folks. Yeah, those boys, I leave them voicemails all the time. And they used to play a snippet or two every now and then. They haven't played a snippet forever. And uh, I'm, <laughs> on, I, yeah, I'm just like, you don't play anybody. I even have my, my, my daughters leaving them voicemails and saying poop and I don't know what all to be silly. And, <laughs> They haven't. They haven't ever played them. I thought I was kind of. I thought they. You know, when my daughter was telling, I don't know what she said, but it was funny. It was all get out and clean for Mark and everything. And yeah, I was like, huh? Didn't even. Didn't even get a get a mention that I am even roping my daughters into leaving them voicemails. Oh, that's so silly. They should just throw it in there. <laughs> I told him one day, like you, you need to like just have nothing but a show of me leaving your voicemail. Leave, leave him a, leave him a moment. To be short. Leave him a voicemail as if you're leaving a voicemail for a world's running podcast, and then leave a voicemail on my line that you're leaving as if you're leaving it for the simple <laughs> human guys. And then we're like, hey guys, I think I got your message by accident. You know, like the whole mailman thing. Like, hey neighbor, I got yeah, your right. mail by accident. <laughs> yeah, hey, I got a neighbor that I get her mail all the time. She is so hateful. That I don't even give her her mail. Makes me hateful too, but I'm like, you're so mean. I don't even want to walk into your yard and give you your mail. Is that bad? Am I, am I a bad neighbor? 
I think I might be. So what do you do with this stuff? Do you just like leave it in your mailbox for the mailman to realize, oh, it wasn't supposed to be here? Or you just, like, dump well, so, sometimes um, I'll shred it for her. Sometimes I'll throw it away. Sometimes I'll let the mailman run it next door and let him figure out why I'm not walking the 30 yards to her front door. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you know it's junk mail, junk mail is junk mail, junk mail, and then I, for, personally, I wouldn't spend the time. Uh, uh, but if it looks important like a bill or something, then I just, just leave it out by the neighbor's mailbox. I don't even want to like open up the neighbor's, neighbor's mailbox. I feel like I'm uh, invading their uh, their personal space by even doing that. So I just kind of like <laughs> I just wedge the wedge the envelope off the side of their mailbox for them to figure out. You're funny. <laughs> I'm a di- I'm a dickhead, so you know it's par for the course for me. No, she's just rude. You know, one of those that we're out barbecuing with friends and family over and she'll leave her dog barking going ape shit for 45 minutes like really put your dog up <laughs> it's not that hard lady like she just she just weird uh, coming up rue gives us something else to think about how vague is that ruel Jeez, could you be any vaguer ruel well it's all coming up on ruel's running Hi, this is uh, Vinny Tortorich from the Celebrity Fitness Trainer Podcast, and Ruel asked me to come on and tell you guys all about my product, my new product at purevitaminclub.com. We now have pure magnesium. It is a broad-spectrum magnesium. Now, I know what you're saying to yourself. What does broad-spectrum mean? Well, look, if you go in the grocery store, you can buy the cheap stuff. It usually only has carbonate or citrate. Uh, usually one of the two, uh, because those are the cheaper forms of it. But you know what? Those forms are good, especially when you add carbonate and glyconate and taurate. Oh, did I say that wrong? No, I didn't. And then citrate. You add those four together, and you have a broad spectrum magnesium. It's more well-rounded magnesium. And guess what? We put nothing else in it, folks. That's it. That's it. No... uh, Byproducts, no fillers, no sand, no nothing. Just what you want. PureVitaminClub.com. Go check out the Broad Spectrum Magnesium. I think you will love it. Once again, I'm Vinny Chodorich, and check us out. Thank you, Vinny. Friends, you can get your supply of Pure Vitamin Club's daily multicap or Broad Spectrum Magnesium. Go to RuelsRunning.com slash vitamins. I'll link to it on the show notes and get your supply today. You just reminded me. I'm I'm parked I'm parked out in front of a, a Starbucks. Right, I'm sitting in a vehicle podcasting with you. Earlier, I was parked in a different spot, closer to um, the outside seating area of the place, because I figured I want to get closer to the, yeah. to the building to get better Wi-Fi. And uh, I sure. I had been sitting there for a while. I was doing some work and stuff on the computer while sitting in the vehicle, you know, with the engine on, because I had the AC running. And uh, at some point, a lady walks over to my vehicle, and she's like, do you mind? You know? I'm like, wow. <laughs> you know? What were you doing that would make her like, do that? like, do you mind? I'm trying to have a conversation here. She was sitting in front of my vehicle. Uh, there's, there's a table set. My vehicle is pointing, to, facing the, the building, but there's tables and chairs, right? Right. And she was sitting out with a friend, and they were having a conversation. Apparently, my, you know when the, when the AC kind of cranks and then tones get yeah, down, cranks again? Yeah. Down? Apparently, it was bothering them <laughs> to a point where she had to come up and say, do you mind? <laughs> wow, that's kind of rude. Yeah, I think it was. I mean, I, I I wasn't sitting there trying to intentionally annoy them, you know. And What happened to, um, you know, hi, you know, right? Um, you know, and asking politely, would it be... Would would you would it be okay if I asked you to maybe turn off your engine or maybe relocate your vehicle to a place be- because, and this is what I'm trying to do, so I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, sorry about that. I backed up and I moved over and then I got in my vehicle and I yelled over across the parking lot to them like, <laughs> like is this okay? 
Wow. Sorry about that. You know, and and it, her friend was an older an older uh, an elder woman, so I didn't want to be like a total uh, jerk or anything. So I somehow managed to appease my personal need to be like yelling, but not coming across as a dick. Just trying to be more courteous, if that even makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> man. Oh, you're funny. Freaking people, man. Ugh. Yeah, people are rude. They're inconsiderate. Yeah, don't they know that I'm trying to set up the podcast? I'm just going to talk about them on over the phone. <laughs> well, I'm sitting here stealing Lowe's Wi-Fi right now. Well, well, I, d- I do that a lot. Well, do you ever buy anything at Lowe's? Almost daily. Yeah, you're not stealing it. So my... My 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 vehicle sitting here doesn't uh, doesn't make him look at me funny. That's for sure because I'm here almost daily. Yeah, you're you're a customer almost daily, and you know your purchases help provide that network infrastructure that they've made available for patrons. Patrons. Same with Starbucks. The amount of coffee that I drink over to their at their places, Wi-Fi, I help help with. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I, I drop a few hundred dollars almost every day here. How are you doing on time, Lonnie? Every day. I'm doing okay. I don't even know what time it is. My uh, commitments that I had at four I have fallen through, so uh, yeah. my, my wife's picking up my daughters, but I'm good. Okay. It's been 45 minutes. I just wanted to make sure because I know that <clears throat> you are a busy guy. Some days, Sam. Some days, uh, I'm, well, people ask me, what do you do? <laughs> You're online all day long. Well... I either have guys driving me around, so I'm Facebooking, or I check my Facebook when I'm at a stoplight. But I'm either like really tied up and really busy, or I'm really flexible and sit around a lot of the time. I mean, it's there's no rhyme or reason to my day. It's just sometimes the guys are doing the demo or doing the work for me, and sometimes I have to go do it too, and just varies every day. I uh, day by day, it's never the same day twice. I uh, I released a. Uh another vlog uh, video um, yesterday or last night and you know what I'm talking oh, about oh I missed that one yeah that one that's, uh, yeah talking through your crotch or something yeah it's crotch crotch cam but uh, the, the most recent one that I released uh, you got a you got, you got a shout out on that one <laughs> talking oh did I yeah talking <laughs> talking about Lonnie and restore restoration uh, while I talk to a camera on my crotch or by my crotch yeah I thought you. I thought. Get, take a look at. It. I think you'll appreciate it. <laughs> Is that on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube on the, the little thing that I got going on over there. <laughs> so do silly. Have, do you have your own your own channel there? Um, I kind of. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it all out. You know, all the all the all the kids today. They they're like really into it. But uh, um, I think so. I think it's a uh, Rubles Running channel. Yeah, it's a. Uh, youtube.com slash Ruel's running um, then what I did was I just tried to separate all the other bits of videos that I've done over the years like the uh, the Villa Capelli and the Pure Vitamin Club op- uh, unboxing type stuff and jump rope videos You're right. so I set up a playlist called Ruel's running vlog and that's where I'm sort of trying to sort sort all of these vlog related videos so it was uh rur- R E R V for Ruel's running vlog vlog number eight. Um, random gear and coffee yet again is what I called it, and uh, in there is a shout out to yours truly, Lonnie. <laughs> Ruel's running. Yeah. Here, I should... I'm I'm doing a search right now while we're while we're talking, uh, and I'll ping you because uh, this is awesome. Uh, this is awesome. Well, Ruel's running's not. Popping up nothing. Um, do a youtube.com slash Ruel's running. Okay. Well, this is this is great uh, podcasting, though, isn't it? It's incredible. <laughs> Ruel's is it what? Is it two two words on your name? It's a. Do, do, you, do you separate? I know uh, it's a, all one word. YouTube.com slash Ruel's running. Ruel's. R U E L S R U N N I N G. We. Then you'll you'll see you'll see. A, guess you guess you need to tag me because I'm not finding you'll it. You see a half naked 
image of me. <laughs> I do see a Ruel Rules Ninja Warrior UK video I could check oh, out. Oh. I'll text message you the link. If, is that okay? Is that going to mess up what we're doing here? I don't think so. There you go. Oh, wow, that was fast. Uh, that was fast. I heard. So let me ask you a question. Trey, Trey uh, uh, I was talking to him last night, and he didn't realize that I talk to so many NSNG members on a daily basis like I do. How, how many people do you talk to from the group? Uh, not that many. I talk to you. I talk to ben Bentley, Rick. Um, then there's the chat. Oh, there's Thompson I've talked to, but not regularly. I mean, you're the most regular of the group, uh, but then everybody else is more of a a chat session. Gotcha. Thompson, Bentley. Yeah, there's several chat bro. chat sessions going on around. Yeah, you know, me, you, and me, you, and Vinny, and you know Trey, you know the admins. Yeah, they. Uh, yeah, we got our we got our thing, and uh, and and that and Buzz. Buzz Park. That's kind of funny. He's a he's a real person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the myth is real. The legend. He, yeah, Buzz. <laughs> that's cool. The um. Yeah, I'm working with them on trying to get a link set for. You know, if anyone wants to charge people for the meetup. Speaking of which, you need to go. Um, but anyway, so like here here it is time, and everybody's like messaging me. I I, I was getting five or six messages a day like fly i'm trying to pay but there's no link and i'm like oh i assume that Vinny would have had that fixed and taken care of well no buzz and i are working through trying to trying to get links set up so that people can pay to attend the uh the meetup this october <laughs> it's kind of funny but you know those of us that know Vinny just understand that that's just how it is <laughs> but it's it's hilarious to me it's an what is it? it's in, in october right <clears throat> Yeah, October 7th, 8th, and 9th. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one, because the kids are in school, you know, I, so I wouldn't be able to do a whole family thing. thing. Now, and kid, kids kids um, probably couldn't do the hike and stuff like that. I don't know what all me and Vinny and Anna have tossed out ideas around. We got some stuff already kind of scheduled and planned out yeah. and we're trying to come up with some other stuff to do I mean man. I definitely would love to be there just you know probably not going to happen you know money wise schedule wise it's just pretty complicated well I understand that yeah you should drive down though take a, take a day off drive down Friday hang out Friday night Saturday Saturday night go home yeah. Sunday it, 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 I mean, I I tried to not let it break my heart because I know when Vinny when we when we spoke last year on the podcast he's like you got to go I'm like okay all right all right and that was a, that was a year ago you figured I'd be able to figure it out between now and now and then like just just yeah not gonna happen I need to make a lot of money and then it'll probably make it a little easier but currently that's not what's going on <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Some days I have more money in my pocket than I know what to do with, and then there's other days that, yeah, I'm needing to borrow money to put gas in my vehicle. Oh. Kind of funny. Yeah, lame. But yeah, people don't realize in the business world that you know I pay like sixteen grand a year in insurance between my commercial liability, my pollution control, my inland marine, my renter's insurance. Uh, you know all this crap. I like. I feel like I'm getting raped every day. People don't realize. That, yeah, when you pay sixteen thousand a year just to have some coverage to protect your tools and your, you know, if I leave a house too wet or molded up or somebody gets sick or injured or dies, you know, and that's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. Not cheap. Wow. Sorry. Yeah, it would freak you out. My wife freaks out when she hears numbers that I tell a guy yeah stop by the job site tomorrow and I'll write you a check for 22000 she's like what? We don't have 22000 I'm like we don't as a couple <laughs> but my business does over here because I'm making money if I'm if he's charging me 22000 I'm making more money that's just how the contracting world works I'm a very specialized contractor so I'm making 10 to 20% off of whatever he's charging me so you know 
so I make two grand off of off of him. Big deal, you know. Just how the world works. Speaking of which, I got to bring in an asbestos contractor to get rid of asbestos in this mold job of mine, and I'm I'm going to make money on that, even though I'm not doing it. I don't have that level of certification to, for asbestos to handle what what they're doing. So anyway, and there's only one outfit in town. Yeah, I, I I've been getting your 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 pics and <clears throat> used to get your videos, um, but yeah, it just still blows my mind the type of stuff that you gotta like break apart and and inspect and deal with. What was that last one with the uh, yeah and I, jerky? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was funny. I still don't know where that came from. But yeah, I was cleaning air ducts, and the dude had a dead bird laying in, in his cold air return of his of his uh, air conditioning system at home. Like, wow! But that smelled good when it was dying. Wow! Wow! It must have been like yeah, over we, we over a small amount, over little by little, as it started to just sort of become what it became. You described it as a mummy, right? <laughs> but. Yeah, it was mummified. It'd been in there for many years. Where did it, did it smell like anything? Oh yeah, you've never smelled the dead. Oh, animal. I have, but I'm thinking like, did you walk into his house and think, oh, there's something clearly dead up in there? No, no, this thing had been dead. Animals, uh, well, when they die in nature, there's bugs and beetles and flies, and, you know, all the just the the animals and critters and insects that that eat dead stuff. Well. So the smell goes away when you run, see deer on the side of the road. Yeah, it'll stink for a day or two. But if you notice, after like two or three days, it don't really stink that bad. Well, when it's inside of a wall cavity or crawl space or somewhere where beetles and the bugs can't get to it, oh, it, it stinks to high heaven for a long time. It can, it can be there for months and months and months. And people pay pay me dearly to get rid of dead animals i was just there to clean his duck work i wasn't there to get rid of a dead animal it didn't stink at all he just had lived there for five years and had never changed his air filter and and uh oh they were they were filthy and nasty so that's all i was there to do is just clean duck work and i opened up his furnace system and there's there's your dead bird so, it was so, huge too. so you took a picture of the dead bird did you leave it with him or did you take it with you and dump it back back in your thing? i i took it with me i took it with me uh, i i can't leave him with it. i did i did text him and say hey looky what i found he says, what the hell is that is that an old eagle i mean looks kind of big but no it was a sparrow or i don't know what it was nothing nothing real big when i was in high school you know you know how it is in high school you kind of run around with your own little uh your own little group of circle of friends and cliques and whatnot Sure, sure. So, you know, same thing when when I was in high school, and uh, every year there was uh, this tradition of uh, what's called war games, where the each group would uh, basically uh, do pranks uh, on 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 any of the other groups. You know. Oh wow, that sounds fun. Yeah, so sounds dangerous so too. <laughs> wa- water balloons and um, a lot of that stuff. Just I think that's sort of the origin of it because. For years, that it had happened before I was even a participant in high school. But it started with water balloons. Then it started to get a little weird. Like, people would put urine in the water balloons somehow. Oh, uh, yeah. And so they would be throwing water, you know, urine-filled water balloons. And then uh, it evolved. In- so that took some work to do. Oh, yeah. I can, you can imagine put, sticking it in some sort of pump, the grossness, and then somehow getting it in a water balloon. Um, um I would put it in a funnel. I'd put the tip over a funnel and then pee into the funnel. And that's just <laughs> nasty, though. That's gross. A lot of pressure needed to get a good tight water balloon uh, expanded, but uh, it evolved into uh, to, um, you know you, you take a you take a newspaper and you stick it in a bucket of water, then it becomes just like mush, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So then so th- so then water balloons, pee water balloons, and then mush. So you throw it on people. You throw it on their cars, just that, and you know, it's just prank after prank after prank, you know, in the name of your group. Then it evolved to uh, let's uh, meet on a field and square off, you know, like you would have several sets of subgroups get uh, become a, a larger group and take on another. You know, it's like ever watched that movie, The Wanderers, or you know, those lit gang movies. Just, nah. just, oh just, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
It's been decades, but yeah. Gangs of kids just going at it with water balloons and mushy paper and and uh it was crazy then it evolved into kidnapping where you know someone would have to make rules and then and then crazy people would make rules where you're like at any point it doesn't have to be in school now if someone sees you out in public they get to kidnap you you know take you to a place and then just like bombard you with water balloons and this this satu- this newspaper junk and whatever but they have to return you back to where they kidnapped you all like messed up so you know <laughs> You would fear for your safety because anybody could just like steal you <laughs> out in public, kidnap yeah. you off the street. Wow! Then it evolved to not just water balloons and pee water balloons and wet paper. It became like someone had a you know like the fecal matter from their ranch, like the chicken poop and the rabbit poop and stuff, and uh. the slop that and poop that came from the pig pens and stuff. So, oh, I would be you know the, the, the more crazy. Pit, pit kids would collect that type of stuff, and then that became like ammo. It's just weird. Yeah, almost sounds like my college fraternity exactly. days. Exactly, it that, and it, it even um, you know, it's like some of the younger generation when I was playing with it, they would they would just get really crazy. They would come to the field when we would have these field battles with like roadkill, yeah, right, and like hold it up like and start screaming like primal. <laughs> You know, and so then you know they would like charge at you with a, with with some roadkill, and you'd run away, and you know that made their group feel like, yay, we're we're winning the battle, <laughs> and we. And then somebody had to top that. Yeah. So one day, you know, I find roadkill. I'm like, well, I'm gonna pick up this road roadkill, and what can I do with it now? So I pick up this roadkill and have it dangling outside of my car while I drive over to some <laughs> Yuck. some uh, some uh, somebody's house who's from the from one of the um, the other groups, and I just dump the thing on the hood of his car <laughs> and drive off. Yeah. Damn, Ruel. It's, it, it's, it, That's funny. It, 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 I, I don't know what to say other than just really did some stupid stuff uh, in high school, and but it was a ton of fun. That reminds me, one time when I was about 13 years old, I had an old lady that, that lived across the street. I never knew her name. We never bothered each other. But for whatever reason... Me and uh, me and my best friend, we were uh, we decided to go. We lived on a mile long street, and the newspapers. We were out after curfew. We snuck out of the house. The newspapers were already thrown out on the sidewalks, and for whatever reason, we decided that it would be hilarious to go steal everybody's newspaper and pile them all up on this lady's front doorstep. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up to this day because she did nothing to provoke us. I have no idea what her response was. <laughs> uh, you know, could you imagine the newspaper like, where's my paper? Where's my paper? You know, for a hundred people that lived on the street <laughs> <laughs> and they were all on this one lady. And then she calls and says, uh, I think your newspaper guy over delivered. Oh, that still cracks me up to this day that I don't know what, I don't know whatever transpired. We never got in trouble. Never put there before or after just whatever. We just decided to, pile them all up on her, on her front doorstep. Oh, yeah. No, that, oh, that's good Good times. That's good stuff. They're right there. <laughs> yeah, nobody got hurt. Yeah, it was inconvenient for somebody, but, you know, it, it was good humor. I'm, I hope she I hope she thought it was funny. Who knows? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know whatever happened to her. Yeah, the neighbors will be like, I don't, I don't, I don't see my paper today. And then someone else will say, well, go over to so-and-so's house. It might be over there. That's kind of like the running joke now, right? I guess. I, I haven't lived in that area for 20-some years, but Almost well, thirty years probably. I don't know. Long time. Long time. Yeah, I I wasn't as cool. I uh, um, my friends would my friends were known to to do things like um, get like what do you call they're they're not fire ex- well I guess they're like fire extinguishers but they don't have like the the uh, the powdery chemical that goes in fire extinguishers. It's just a canister. That you fill up, and then you there's a little valve on the on the back on the back end that you on the neck that you pressurize using like a gas with yeah, water. You can, you can put water in there, then you would close it up, and then you could take like a gas station tire air pressure air pump, and then add pressure into it. Huh, never heard of that one. Then just like any old uh, fire high, um, fire extinguisher, you you just cr- you press on the uh, you pull on the handle and valve and it shoots the th- shoots whatever the content is in there out the hose you know 
as as powerful as you're able to put put pressure build pressure in there. Huh. So so very basic. It's like the best squirt gun you can find, <laughs> right? Sure. And you, someone takes it from a school school grounds. And uh, so my, my friend has it, and he fills it up with things like soy sauce and water and fish oh. sauce and, <laughs> right, cooking oil or whatever. Yuck. Just some weird kitchen concoction and seals it up, pressurizes it, then, uh, you know, drive, drive uh, towards the tourist strip and uh, w- drive slowly by uh, folks on a sidewalk, yell out to them, they turn around and squirt. <laughs> And drive off, drive off. Wow. Yeah. I don't know what this episode has turned into. It's sort of like confessions of the most stupidest stuff that we used to do in high school. <laughs> yeah, in college, I actually hosed a pledge down one time with, with a powdery, pressurized fire extinguisher. He actually got kind of sick. <laughs> yeah, that can't be good. <laughs> actually, he got really sick. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. He was sleeping, too. We just broke into the room and... And didn't even he was about to get sprayed down with this yellowy greenish yellow powder crap. Oh man. Oh that Oh, we were mean. We were so mean. What do you do what do you, what Oh, it's good times though. What do you do? Like he ingested or something and uh Well yeah, yeah, he was, you know, sleeping and he gets doused with this powder that goes everywhere and then uh then we made him clean up his own room. <laughs> <laughs> and vacuum it all down because everything had this powder all over everything. It goes everywhere. Uh, oh, those were the days. I loved college. Yeah, we get we get that type of college behavior sometimes at the office, folks. Uh, <clears throat> certain departments are more um, college-like than other departments, and uh, I've seen pictures of people's cubicles all covered up in tinfoil. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, like... Everything is their keyboard, their monitor, their chairs, everything. Every little bit is covered up in foil. Oh, yeah, I got a. I actually have a fraternity brother that is a lieutenant colonel in the army. But uh, he would leave for he would leave to go to the dining hall, and uh, he'd be gone thirty minutes or whatever. We'd break into his room, and literally everybody just nothing planned, just just sporadically. This one guy, we would break into his room. We would steal everything out of there, mattresses, clothes, liquor, everything. His school books, his entertainment system, stereo, TV, just empty them out. And we'd just throw it in whoever's room had the most, you know, whichever whichever bedroom had the most room for the for the for for his crap. We were just stashing it everywhere. And then we'd all sit, go sit back down like we were doing whatever, studying and playing video games. And, and he'd come in, he'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Again, <laughs> where, where do you guys put this stuff? <laughs> yeah, it was. It, you just had to been there, but it's hilarious to think that. Yeah, here he is, Lieutenant Colonel in the Army, about to retire, and and uh, we used to mess with him so bad. It, it, it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm cracking up thinking about All that. Right, I have one. <laughs> I worked in a photo lab years ago, and I had a remote uh, photo lab. You know, with the the film. Um, developer equipment and the the print printer and develop development equipment and uh, I worked with a couple guys at a time and we had a small fridge in uh in the in the in the building it wasn't really even a building it was just a a container you know there was uh like those forty foot containers that, uh, that sit in the back of trailer trucks just converted into a lab anyways yeah we take guy we wow that seems kind of shaky drive take photographs drive back print them process them develop them print them Package them, drive back out, sell the pictures, take more pictures, do this over and over and over again. I worked at a, I worked as a photographer for um, a tourist attraction, like a semi-sub, submarine type touristy thing back in the island. Huh. And uh, we used to like do little pranks with each other in the in the in the lab, and we take take the person's car keys towards the end of the day, and like we'll stick it in the freezer, and then. They they just be, go bonkers. Look, where are my keys? Where are my keys? I gotta do my run. Where's my keys? I'm like, like I don't know, man. Why don't you check the freezer? You know, it's <laughs> kind of stupid. But they wouldn't check the freezer until they finally checked the freezer, and they're like, "What the heck? Are my keys doing in the freezer for?" And we're like, we told you to check in the freezer. <laughs> you you should have listened. <laughs> oh man, here here. I guess this is turning into just 
topping each other with with funny prank stories. But here's one that still cracks me up to this day. I was an unruly child growing up, and I was in uh, in school suspension. They put us in an isolated room. You know, all the kids that were in trouble. We 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 had different bathroom breaks and lunch breaks, and everybody else. So. So this particular day, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but I decided on each and every one of my bathroom breaks that I would go in and I would pee on all the all the toilet paper rolls. <laughs> so in my high school, they didn't have they had stalls, but they didn't have doors on them for I for I guess a whole host of reasons. So so lo and behold, I'm in there taking an actual leak in the urinal because I'd already peed on all <laughs> all three stalls and throughout the course of the day. And uh, so the very last stall, there was some guy, he had diarrhea so bad, it was disgusting. you got to be desperate to take a crap at school anyway. And then when you don't have a door on it, and you know, you got to be desperate. So I knew I just pissed on his toilet paper within the hour. And um, uh, on my way out, uh, I flipped the light switch off. And uh, knowing that he was uh, really not in a good spot to... <laughs> and I, it still cracks me up. I don't even know who the dude was. I didn't go and peek to say, peekaboo, I see you. I have no idea. It could have been my best friend. It could have been the, the worst enemy that I had. It could have been a teacher. I don't know who it was. But I remember flipping that light switch off on him and walking out the door like, huh, huh, huh. went back to class like no big deal because – you know, whoever that was, they're not going to tell a soul that they had wiped their ass with piss soaked toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like that's a new show. No, that cracks me What would me you up. do? And then you have all these. Okay, what would you do? You have diarrhea, and you're sitting in a bathroom. <laughs> Somebody turns off the light, but little do you know that that same person also urinated on the roll of toilet paper that you're about to use, but you haven't used it yet. <laughs> I feel. I feel bad, but I still crack up. I mean, that still has me laughing to this day. And that's, the, you know, I graduated high school in 93. So this was 92, 93, somewhere in that range. <laughs> 25 years later, I'm still cracking up with it. And it was all I could do to keep from just busting out in class the rest of the day. Because I was, I was dying laughing. And I didn't tell a soul either. Because, you know, you can't tell on yourself. Because what if it gets around? Yeah, that's good. But now that story lives forever in this podcast. <laughs> yeah i think i've told it one other place before oh man that's funny shit though that is hilarious that but seriously what do you do do you kind of uh, uh not deal with yourself just so you could turn on the light then head back to the john to deal with yourself or do you use do you navigate through the darkness to clean yourself up and then worry about turning the light back on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh -huh. You don't win either way. <laughs> yeah, I guess I would like uh, sacrifice my underwear. And turn, I don't know. Oh. I hadn't thought about that. But yeah, just flip that light switch went off, and I, I was dying laughing. <laughs> you know that. You know, um, you know that guy walked out, and he was looking at everybody in the eye. He's trying to figure out somebody who flinches. I know that's the guy. I know that's the guy. Oh like, man. Like, like he's but I doubt he could look anybody in the eye because he has like brown trout hanging out of his ass and he's too embarrassed. I don't, yeah, I don't know who, like I said, I don't know who it was. It could have been a, a friend of mine. I don't know who it was. <laughs> oh, real. That's, I think we just took a really bad turn. No, it's excellent because, you know, you think about it, it's like the mind of an I don't know. Would you say would you say adolescent? Is that is that the right description for that age? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the mind, you know how it really is wrong. It it can go wrong, but it's just so funny. Oh, it's hilarious. Oh. It you know mine isn't as as exciting, but I remember one time, and this is my adolescent mental brain. Um, you know, no rhyme or reason. Kind of like your there was no rhyme or reason why you decided to saturate each one of those rolls of toilet paper in that bathroom. Mine was just walking into the mall. There was an elevator, and it's just a two-story. It's just two levels in this mall. I walk into, I think, what might might be the only elevator in the mall. You know, I get in, door shut. I pee in the elevator, get out of the second floor. <laughs> <laughs> no reason, just just to do it. Like some weird idea, just some weird notion comes in my head. I'm like, okay, do it. 
Yeah. Don't even think about it. Just do it and then done. I've taken a piss before in the changing room at JC Penney's before. That was kind of along the line, just needed a pee, no rhyme or reason. I could have walked to the bathroom, but eh, I was right there. I just pissed in the floor. <laughs> Yeah. So if there are any younger listeners that, that happen to be tuning into this episode and realizing, oh my gosh, what a bunch of morons these guys are. It's all about having fun in life. Don't hurt anybody as much as possible. Be, you know, and don't get caught. <laughs> and don't get caught, right? right. Did you ever <laughs> fork a yard? I don't even know what that means. Well, we used to go buy, uh, you know, however many packages of disposable forks and then we'd go drive them all into people's yards <laughs> we would empty out 10 packages in somebody's yard and it would be random again we wouldn't even know who they were they didn't you know we we were six so we were mobile let's say and we were just driving around one night we were like hey let's go fork their yard we, we fork people's yards all the time so it's or, the alternative to uh to uh tissue papering a house TP right a house. same you just same concept <laughs> you just have forks jabbed into their lawn and and it looks as impressive as a, as a. There would be hundreds of them. I don't know how many came wow. in those packages. Fifty, a hundred of them. I don't know. We'd go buy <laughs> ten of them. So there'd be like a thousand, thousand forks in somebody's yard. <laughs> Can you imagine what they were thinking in the the next morning? <laughs> were they all the color white? <laughs> yeah, they were all white. We just randomly. Yeah, right. It's like randomly yeah, drive them into the ground, sticking up, with the handle sticking up. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like those those uh, those paper darts that people would somehow launch and stick on the ceiling tile of a of the classroom. You know what I'm talking about? The what? You know, like they fold paper into these darts. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough so that there's a pointy tip, and then kids could like somehow whip them up with their with their fingers. You know, launch it with their hands, and uh, get them stuck on the ceiling tile. <laughs> could never do that. Oh, what I did in high school. With those ceilings. <laughs> oh, man, you're bringing out some memories I hadn't thought of in a long time. I used to pass a note around every so often in class, look at the footprints on the ceiling and pass it on, like, here, pass, pass, pass. And I would just sit back and watch everybody stare up at the ceiling <laughs> trying to find the footprints. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, I love that kind of stuff. That stuff just cracks me up, like, to no end. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he couldn't pull oh, it very great. often because it would get around very quick. But yeah, about one year, I would, I would, I would, hey, pass this on. <laughs> Look at the footprints on the ceiling. <laughs> and the teacher, once I was like, what is everybody looking up at? Because <laughs> the whole class was looking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that's classic right there. There was the, uh, there was the, the one time uh, a, a, a friend uh, we went to high school with had, a, had one of those uh, kind of smaller hatchback cars. And this is when all of us are old enough to drive and have, you know, drive to school and park in the student parking lot and whatnot. But he had a smaller vehicle and a, a handful of our friends would, we would get a hold of the vehicle and bounce, you know, with its springs and suspension kind of, yeah, kind yeah. of count, count off and let it bounce. You know, we'll hold the bumper down and count let it bounce, you know, like count to five or something, and on the up, upward motion rebound, we would pick up part of the car, and we would get the car to a point where we would get it to change the direction it faced when it parked, yeah, or some oddball direction. We've done that a time or two. Oh yeah, and then uh, S10 pickups work great. We would go to in college and in, in the fraternity, we would uh, all go out to eat, and somebody would park, uh, you know, had their S10 pickup there, and you know. Six of us would grab his back bump or pick up the whole thing, turn it sideways, and we're at a public place. And he had to wait for people to come out <laughs> to let, <laughs> let the neighbors move out so he could drive off. And we 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 all left oh. and uh, left him there. And he's like, "What?" And this is pre cell phone days, so we're like, "Hey, Troy, well, uh, oh, what yeah. took so long? We all walked out together." <laughs> like, Fuck you guys! I mean, <laughs> good. That's, uh, good. that's good time. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Times. But, but yeah. when you do, we've done the same thing. I mean, then. When you, I mean, when you do that, you got to look out for retaliation from the other kids, the other group. Oh yeah. I, in, oh in, yeah. In retaliation to the the moving of the, the picked up vehicle, um, um, a friend had his vehicle covered in uh, bumper stickers, Pepsi Cola bumper stickers, all over, the, like all over the one side of his vehicle that he had hole rust holes at. So they basically helped him cover <laughs> up the holes, but now he just 
was branded with Pepsi Cola all over the place. You all did that? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's stuff that happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny put it on the passenger side so you don't see it <laughs> there, there was this one time it was, it was I was like about to crap my pants because we were in the student parking lot and we had um, the, in, in the spirit of war games we had uh, smeared junk all over the windshield of uh, some other group members vehicles and one of the parapros was, who was kind of cruising in monitoring the uh, the parking lot he saw us and he he was in a vehicle he, so he drove over across the across the parking lot to where we were and he tried and he tried to try to try to catch us and we had we were in a vehicle ourselves my friend had a had a hatchback uh, a smaller vehicle a smaller vehicle and the the dude the parapro was trying to like block us off from from hitting the exit and we're like oh man we're we're, we're busted we're we're going to get in trouble right and it so happened that the fence that we were facing at one at, at one moment was um, the vehicle was facing a this big old cut in the chain link fence. And my friend I was driving was like, he says, "Hey guys, look, should I?" You know. <laughs> so I was like, "Go!" And you did it. And he gunned it right through the chain link fence. Split. It was already split, but the vehicle just kind of opened it up, and we went right through that fence. Oh no! And we were like, and we drove off, and we're like, "Yeah!" It was so awesome. The feeling of like. That excitement of oh my god we're gonna get busted, no we're not we just escaped and we left that fool pair bro he was basically a high school dropout that was a that was, from that high school who had somehow managed to be, become a pair pro, um, and we weren't gonna we weren't gonna let that moron catch us, but we returned later on that day with a with a different vehicle and there were cops on the scene and there were I think someone was trying to file a report, you know no one's vehicle was was harmed other than just a bunch of like goopy stuff on the windshield which is part of the, right. the whole game just a car wash yeah it was just part of the whole game you know but uh, we made that idiot, that idiot feel like an idiot for sure well real i think we've officially talked about nothing for about an hour and a half now i love it thank you very much for spending the time you know it felt good yeah you need to call anna now don't don't you yeah i got i've got i've got some time yeah we'll do that thanks for hanging out with me yeah thanks for hanging out on uh for the sake of uh anytime tell tell ruel or uh, tell anna and, and uh Vinny i said hello yep. <laughs> i will that's for sure so you do what you do i'll do what i gotta do and we'll uh, stay in touch all right we'll see you thanks man and bye 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 thanks for listening to ruel's running podcast with ruel If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast.